Now let's move on to football. We have got this big game, City and uh, Liverpool at the weekend. Our own Simon Jordan uh, was uh, saying the other day, uh, ahead of this game, the way, the way you view it. Let's get your thoughts on this, John. This is what Simon had to say. Man City are the best team in the country. Probably Man City are the best team in Europe. Best Liverpool in the world. and the world, probably. You're probably right, yeah. And Liverpool are pushing again and starting to rebuild and starting to get back to where they were when I th- I mean I still find I have always felt that Liverpool I would rather watch Liverpool than I'd rather watch, than watch Manchester City not because of any particular bias I have towards Manchester City or Liverpool but I've always enjoyed the brand of football that Liverpool play more exciting more exhilarating more feral and and I think Danny said it a number of people have said it is it's not it's not meant to be to be disrespectful when you say Man City are boring but the domination of the ball almost has a familiar feel to it and an outcome that you know that's coming where I was with Liverpool there's more exhilaration and more excitement That was Simon with uh, Jim White and Danny Murphy uh, Are you enjoying watching the team at the moment? It's a bit of a rebuilding period but they're playing some good stuff Absolutely they? I mean we had our midfield issues last mm. year and of course we knew we had to address them but the good thing about Jurgen and the trust we have in Jurgen is that he resisted the urge just to sign players for the sake of it in January because we needed midfield players and the fans would put up with r- trying to get the right people in which is what we've now done Um Still looking at a number six, and uh, and those come in, and by Setic is I earmark for that role, but he's he's injured. But in terms of everyone else, it's fine. I understand what they're talking about, to be honest with you, because I think that if you look at City, City play a very purist type of football, possession based, very considered. Whereas I think Liverpool is a mix between City and the way football was, say, twenty years ago, aggressive. You know, midfield players who get up and down, box to box, who mm. try and fight, and because. In the last 15 years, football has, has, has become more more like everyone's trying to play like Man City, knocking mm-hmm. the ball around, keeping possession, not getting the ball in the box, not getting forward, not paying the ball forward quickly. And Liverpool are a blend between the, between the two. So I understand what they're talking about because it's a very exciting brand of football. But you have to say Man City is a fantastic team. Uh, it's interesting, Luis Suarez is backing up Darwin Nunes for Uruguay at the moment. And he said, I'm quite happy to do it because I think Darwin is, is shaping up to be one of the best front men in the world I think I mean, Lewis is quite happy to do it because Darwin is doing all his running Yeah, quite, because quite I tell you possibly. I've never seen anyone run as much as Darwin, the yeah, Darwin yeah. Nunes I mean yeah. at Liverpool that's why the fans love him he's 100% he gives 100% effort commitment he chases lost causes chases back into midfield it's like you know when you first get into a team when you're a young kid and he just want to run around and that's, and that's what he does you know so he gets he gets a lot of chances because of his enthusiasm his pace and because he's suited to the way we play, we get the ball forward quickly. Probably not playing at Man City the way they play, but the way he, he plays suits us down to the ground. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah. so, so Bosley's been uh, a good signing Oop. as well. So Bosley. All right, I just wondered because everyone always says it quickly and, and hopes no one asks him to say it again. <laughs> just call him Dominic. So Bosley has been incredible. Well, Listen, amazing, I've yeah. never, I've, I, I kind of heard about him before, but never seen him. And that's mm. how good the scouting is because Liverpool signed players who will suit the way Liverpool play. Mm. I don't think he would suit Man City or Arsenal. He probably wouldn't go there. But when he came, ne- I've mean, never heard of him. From the first time I saw him, he was just incredible. Play anywhere. He reminds me of Steven Gerrard to a certain extent because you don't necessarily get box-to-box midfield players who can defend, who can attack. But that's what that's what he does. You know, I've been so impressed with him. Um, and he's level-headed. He's 22. He's, he's been fantastic. Um, he's been our best player. Would you say that Liverpool, I, I feel like they're, at, they're ahead of the curve. But for, for where they for their development, you know, they were de- a developing team. You said their midfield last season wasn't there. Yeah, they've 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 got sort of three new players, and they've all fitted immediately. Yeah, because of course, as I said, they look for the type of player that's going to suit what they want. Also, for the age of players, we are always going to have a bit of a, a transitional period. Because if you look at when we won the league and the year before, even when we came that close in finishing second, the players were twenty nine to thirty two. Good experience. Yeah, that's not going to last. You had to change them. The Mane's, of course, Salah's still there, but the Firmino's, the Hendersons, and then you would have a transitional period of young players coming in, and it's a question of getting that right. And of course, if you look at them now, the the, the age of the the Diaz's and the Nunes's and the Sobersly, Dominic. Um, <laughs> it, it really it, it hasn't I won't say it's been a seamless transition because of course last year we had our issues but of course now if you look at the age and the profile of the players that we actually have the future looks very bright I mean at the start of the season with the rebuild new players coming to bed in you would have said top four was, was good for Liverpool do you think they can do more than that can they can they win top, the league this top year top four is a very interesting um, could be top five this year of course couldn't it? because yeah. I remember when the whole idea of Champions League of course you had to finish first in the European Cup then the top two then three then the top four and I think anybody Anybody who talks about wanting to finish in the top four is talking about fourth or mm. third at best. Yeah. Anybody who wants to come first and second never say, we're hoping for the top four. Yeah. Yeah? So yeah, I think if you are a Tottenham or whatever and you think, let's get in the top four and fans feel very positive because you know we're going to be in the top four, which could be first, second, third or fourth. Anybody who says top four doesn't mean first or second, they mean third or fourth. So I think I would talk in terms of first or second. 
I wouldn't say top four. I, I think it's a given that we're going to be in the top four. I'd be surprised if you aren't and disappointed. I would be disappointed if you're not in the top two, which obviously is the top two. Man City are favourites, but we have to be looking to be first. And second. you see City winning it. You see them being top. They if are it's favourites. Not, if it's not Liverpool. They are favourites, yeah. They are favourites. I mean, we can push them, um, but I think that those two, Arsenal, obviously from last year, were fantastic. Great consistency. This year, once again, showing that, but... W- just like Tottenham all of a sudden no matter how well you do when you're coming into February and March when yeah. new injuries have got a big enough squad that's when you can see teams fall but I'm hoping Tottenham have got their injuries out of the way now from my point of view because maybe by February or March they'll have mm. players back but they you know, they they didn't have a big squad to start with yeah. and they've been done by these injuries it's going to be very di- they've just got to keep in touch but we'll see um, bit of England um, those last couple of results were a bit disappointing mm. um, but that's the, how far we've come the hard work had been done yeah I was going to ask you that's how far we've come that, you yeah. know because the expectations now you know, we, we, we beat Malton, of course, okay, we drew, but we we're already qualified. But the expectations is such that, you know, we expect to be winning matches. And England are, I think England is a unique country ever since when I played, whereby when I played and, and, the, and the pressure on England players to play well and win every match is there. Every match you're playing, you've got to play well, you've got to win. When you look at, 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 sometimes you see France and Spain get funny results against teams and, mm. and, and they don't get criticised because, you know, when they're trying new things, trying new players, or if they don't play particularly well, they, they aren't under that pressure when they get to the tournaments they are but England has done the pressure to perform well in every game now they've qualified and of course you look at the game against Malta and they're experimenting so I haven't got an issue as far as Gareth Southgate's concerned as far as I'm concerned re- re- regarding Gareth Southgate all you can ask any manager to do is to maximise the potential of the team mm-hmm. and he has maximised the potential of England to get to the semi-final the final we lost in the final you can't ask anymore you can't ask anymore and with a bit of luck we can go on to win but if we don't win a tournament under his tenure it's not failure it's not failure at all he has maximised that potential and if you ask all countries to maximise their potential so everybody plays to their maximum should England win the World Cup and be the best in the world no mm. they shouldn't so other teams have underachieved and we've maximised our potential. So I've got nothing but praise for Gareth. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.